attacks on the terrorists, and thereafter we'll proceed to the interactive session where I can entertain some of your questions, if any. Well, the armed forces is bent on sustaining the winning ways of our operational engagements as demonstrated with the recent rescue of 16 and 137 hostages in Sokoto and Kaduna states, respectively. The rescue of these hostages is indicative of a better understanding of the dynamics of what we are dealing with and how best to address the issue in a much safer manner. The question will be how did this rescue take place? The rescue operations was based on collaboration between the military working with local authorities and government agencies across the country in a coordinated approach. The success demonstrates the unwavering commitment of the armed forces to secure and protect the citizens of this country against harm and acts of terror. Well, in that operation, the pressure of the military operations created a significant level of distress, both for the terrorists and the children. Given that situation, our line of interest was the children. The level of distress that was created by the children was sufficient enough for troops to exploit in their rescue. And that was how it went down. On the flip side, we must never allow the incident that occurred in Delta State that led to the killing of 17 soldiers that were buried yesterday to ever happen again. The armed forces is a force for stability that, that employs both kinetic and non-kinetic measures to achieve the desired end state. Now, prior to this ugly incident in Delta State, the military had constructed several and executed several projects in Delta State. And these projects were as a sign of goodwill geared towards winning the hearts and minds of these citizens of the state. And some of these projects, for instance, is the construction of the multi-purpose multi hall and borehole projects in Patani local government area, as well as medical outreach at a larger community in Udu local government area. All of this and several other projects were done by the military in Delta State. Hence, it was quite surprising that we will get paid back in such a manner. Nevertheless, troops will continue with their efforts until the culprits are found, arrested, tried, and brought to justice by Nigerian law. As for citizens, you must know that you are our first line of intelligence and therefore must rise to the occasion. We have a duty to flush out the culprits and we must rise to that occasion. Now, to the events of the week, during the week under review, 
troops neutralized 212 terrorists and arrested 252 persons. Troops also arrested 29 perpetrators of oil theft and rescued 244 kidnapped hostages. In the South-South, troops denied the oil theft of an estimated sum of over 1 billion naira. Furthermore, troops recovered 223 assorted weapons and 2,756 assorted ammunition. The breakdown of which is as follows. Three M56 rifles, 115 AK-47 rifles, three PKT gun, among several others. Now, troops also recovered 1,716 rounds of 7.62 millimeter special ammunition, 494 rounds of 7.62 millimeter NATO ammunition, among several others. Troops in the Niger Delta area discovered and destroyed 102 dugout pits, 41 boats, 36 storage tanks, and eight vehicles, among others. Troops also recovered 944,000 liters of stolen crude oil, over 170,000 liters of illegally refined AGO, and 1,500 liters of DPK. We can now look at our various operations across the country, beginning with Operation Harding K in the Northeast. Now, troops of Operation Harding K recorded a significant occurrence during the week. And this was as a follow up to a court order of the Federal High Court in Meduguri. The court ordered that a total of 313 suspects in detention for terrorism-related offenses to be released to the Bruno State Government. The court ordered the release for want of evidence after the conclusion of investigation and other auxiliary matters. Now, these cases were prosecuted by the Department of Prosecution, Federal Ministry of Justice. And I wish, to, I, I wish to add that it is not the first time this will happen. It is a routine where they come, they check the cases of those awaiting trial, and then where they find that there's insufficient evidence, they order that those people in detention be released. So accordingly, we will hand over the release persons to Bono State Government for further action. Overall, troops of Operation Harden K neutralized 52 terrorists, arrested 137 of them, and rescued 78 kidnapped hostages. They recovered three M56 rifles, 40 AK-47 rifles, over 300 rounds of 7.62 millimeter NATO ammunition, among others. Now, we can move to the North Central, where we have Operation Safe Heaven. 
Troops of Operation Safe Haven recorded the following during the period on the review. The troops arrested violent extremists in Mangu, just east, just south, just north, Kwampan, and Barkin Ladi local government areas, all in Plateau State. Additionally, the troops conducted offensive operations in Barkin Ladi and Mangu local government areas of Plateau State. Furthermore, troops raided hideouts of violent extremists in Wase, local government area of Plateau State. Troops also tracked and arrested violent extremists and a gun runner in Wase, local government area of Plateau State, as well as Buguru and Tafawa Balewa, local government areas of Bauchi State. Overall, the troops of Operation Safe Heaven arrested 10 violent extremists during the week and they rescued one kidnapped hostage. The troops also recovered one AK-47 rifle, two PKT guns, 16 rounds of 7.62 mm special ammunition, among others. Continuing with the North Central, let's look at Operation Wild Stroke. The troops of Operation Wild Stroke recorded the following during the week on their review. The troops conducted fighting patrol in Usa and Takum, local government areas of Taraba State. They also conducted raid operations in Ukum and Nasarawa Igom, local government areas of Benue and Nasarawa State, respectively. Furthermore, troops conducted offensive operations in Kasina Allah, Ukum, Adu, and Gwe, local government areas of Benue State. Troops equally conducted offensive operations in Sabo, Sabo, Birni, and Igabi, local government areas of Kaduna State. Overall, the troops of Operation Wild Stroke neutralized 47 violent extremists, arrested seven of them, and rescued three kidnapped hostages. Troops also recovered 29 AK-47 rifles, over 200 rounds of 7.62 meter special ammunition, among others. Let's now cross over to the Northwest where we have Operation Hadering Daji. A significant incident in Operation Hadering Daji during the week, as we all know, is the rescue of 16 and 137 hostages in Sokoto and Kaduna State, respectively. All rescue persons have been handed over to the respective state governments. Still on the rescue operation, I will add that the rescue operation was based on a collaboration between military, working with local authorities and government agencies across the country in a coordinated approach. The pressure, like I stated earlier, of military action against the terrorists created a significant level of distress both for the terrorists and the children. Let's put it this way. Imagine trying to control 137 children when a firefight is ongoing. Given the situation, our line of interest was the children. And we exploited that to rescue them. 
Accordingly, the level of distress created by the children created an atmosphere sufficient enough for troops to exploit and rescue them. The rescue of these hostages is indicative of our better understanding of the dynamics of what we are dealing with, as well as how to best address the situation in a much safer manner. Overall, the troops of Operation Hadri Indaji neutralized 62 terrorists, arrested 12 of them, and rescued 162 kidnapped hostages. Troops recovered 46 AK-47 rifles, 26 locally made guns, and over 100 rounds of 7.62 millimeter NATO ammunition, among others. Now to the South-South, where we have Operation Delta Safe. The troops of Operation Delta Safe maintain the momentum against the activities of crude oil theft. The troops destroyed illegal refining sites. They conducted a raid operation in any local government area of acquired bomb state. Additionally, they conducted search and rescue operation in Ugeli South and Burutu local government area of Delta State. Furthermore, troops conducted offensive operations in LMA local government area of River State. Overall, the troops of Operation Delta Save recovered over 900,000 liters of stolen crude oil during the week. They also recovered over 170,000 liters of illegally refined AGO, otherwise known as diesel, and 1,500 liters of PMS, otherwise known as petrol. Additionally, troops of Operation Delta Safe discovered and destroyed over 100 dugout pits, 41 boats, and 36 storage tanks. Other items include 49 cooking ovens, 8 vehicles, and 61 refining sites, among others. Troops also apprehended 29 persons involved in oil theft and violent extremists. Troops recovered 12 weapons and 113 assorted ammunition during the week. We can now move to the southeast where we have Operation Udoka. The troops of Operation Udoka recorded the following during the week. The troops arrested violent extremists involved in kidnapping, and they had a female member of the gang who is a gun runner in Unicha, not local government area of Anambra State, as well as in Insuka and Onisha South, local government areas of Enugu State. Additionally, troops raided a hideout of a violent extremist in Izi and South Ijo local government areas of Eboin and Baesta State, respectively. Furthermore, troops conducted offensive operations in Ibo Eze and Afiko, local government areas of Enugu and Eboin states, respectively. Overall, troops of Operation Udoka neutralized 11 terrorists and arrested 14 violent extremists. The troops of Operation Udoka recovered 10 AK 47 rifles 
and over 250 rounds of 7.62 meter special ammunition, among others, during the week. Now, all the recovered items, the arrested persons and rescued hostages have been handed over to relevant authorities for further action. Having listened to the brief, you will understand that what you have heard indicates that troops are weathering the storm through offensive posture and an improved understanding of the modus operandi of the terrorists and their cohorts across the country. Accordingly, we are doing our best to rescue other hostages in terrorist captivity. And it will be recalled that we have been consistent in our saying that we will continue to hunt these terrorists and eliminate the threat that they pose to citizens. Overall, citizens are urged to remember that they are our first line of intelligence. Accordingly, we all have a, res have a collective responsibility of doing right. That said, a banner for the wanted persons involved in the killing of the 17 soldiers that were buried yesterday is hereby released to the press. And we encourage citizens, particularly those in Delta State, to assist in the investigation by flushing these persons out. Thank you. Hostages in Sokoto and 137 of them in Kaduna State. As for the activities of the adversary on social media, I won't be able to discuss so much about it here for very obvious reasons. Well, what I will say is we should be circumspect of propaganda misinformation, disinformation, fake news, and anything that is emanating from the camp of the adversary. I will leave it at that. Thank you. Now, this is what I will say. We must never allow what happened in Delta State that resulted in the killing of 17 soldiers that were buried yesterday to ever repeat itself in this country again. We must never allow it to happen again. When you look at our armed forces, our armed forces is a force for good. We are deployed across the country for a reason. And that reason is obvious to all, should be obvious to all, for the protection of our citizens and the restoration of peace where there is none. What we do in a situation where there is tension is to de-escalate it. And where it has gone out of hand, we contain it to make sure it doesn't spread. So what has happened in Delta must never repeat itself. And it is for that reason that we have put out 
this banner of eight persons, including a woman, as wanted persons. We will do whatever it takes to get these people. If we need to put a bounty on their head, we will do that. Now, to the issue of persons released by the court. The court in Medugri has ordered the release of 313 persons that have been in detention for terrorist-related offenses. And the release was ordered on the 5th of March, and the reason was for want of evidence. Like I did mention earlier, it's not the first time that this is happening. It has been happening over time. And what the military is doing about it is first for us to recognize that these operations are complex operations. So we will improve our battlefield evidence collection if that will help in ensuring that the prosecutions go through successfully. As for the issue of a journalist reportedly kidnapped, I will say that the armed forces are not in that line of business of kidnapping journalists. <laughs> we are in a democracy, and we don't have any hangover of military regime in us. The military does not kidnap journalists, and I will leave it at that. OK, that said, I think we've come to the end of today's briefing. Have I missed any question? <laughs>